Greetings fellow humans, I'm Martian Boo, and today we have some really exciting news if you're playing any constructed format. Even Battlegrounds got some cool stuff, but I'm not really in a position to talk about that. We have a lot of nerf and buff changes targeted at all the formats. In particular, if you are a wild player and looking to have the mode tuned up a little bit, we have some great news in here for you. <laughs> so with that said, let's get right in. First up here, we have some nerfs that are targeted primarily at standard. There are a couple in here that really impact wild and uh, several that don't. <laughs> so the ones that don't are like Copper Tail Snoop, Spite Lash Siren, Star Strong Bow, and probably Contaminated Lasher. Mech Rogue is a force in in standard, so that's why they're toning down Copper Tail Snoop. Spite Lash Siren, uh, the Naga Mage has an uninteractive playstyle, I hear, so that is getting its nerf revert reverted. <laughs> it's going back up a mana. The Starstrung Bow is losing an attack. I know that Hunter has received a lot of nerfs recently but Arcane Hunter is still one of the best decks in the game, and my understanding here is that if they're nerfing all of Arcane Hunter's worst matchups, then Arcane Hunter is looking too strong, so they just wanted to tone it down a little. Honestly, I don't see a big change to the deck's performance coming from uh, slightly one attack off of Starstrung Bow, so if you are a standard Hunter fan, I'm sure that you will still have Arcane Hunter to enjoy. The Copper Tail Snoop change, you know, losing plus one plus one is probably going to matter here and there, but you know, we don't play that in Wild. It's <laughs> it's really a it's really a standard change. And then Contaminated Lasher, the standard actually had a Miracle Druid with Auctioneer, much like Wild did, except the win condition was like Ignis and Yogg-Saron instead of uh, Tony Naturalize. We'll get to the change to Auctioneer in a second, but Contaminated Lasher is getting changed as well. I guess there's a non-Auctioneer build that was popping up in the last couple of days. So uh, hitting Contaminated Lasher means the non-Auctioneer versions of the deck are a little worse too. So this is going up a mana and up a health. All right, so the changes here that affect Wild Movement of Pride is going from draw your highest cost minion to just draw a minion. Reno Warlock in Wild made a comeback because of Movement of Pride, specifically tutoring Sargeras. So this will no longer always hit Sargeras unless you like <laughs> cut all of your other minions. I imagine that's a huge hit. So like whether that means Reno Lock is completely unplayable or not is something that uh, we'll, we'll work out next week, but <laughs> the Symphony of Sins into Sargeras insta win is no longer consistent, so win rate of that deck is going down uh, in Wild for sure. By the way, that is the exact same thing that was happening in Standard as they were playing this to get Sargeras way too early. It is nice though that they went this route instead of just increasing the cost on Symphony because I think Symphony is a really fun card even without Sargeras and it was pretty hard to cast at six. Then we have some even warrior nerfs. Obviously this is just targeting Odin warrior and standard, but it has impact in wild. So craftsman's hammer is going down in armor. That means that you're losing three armor to stay alive and you're losing three damage on the weapon overall. This is about the softest the nerf could have been. Uh, if it went up a mana, I think the card was dead in both formats. If they switched the order that you gain armor so that you gained it after you'd already attacked, the deck would have lost a lot of damage, and I don't think it would have been competitive with things like Questline Druid anymore. And also if it lost a durability, I think that would have been devastating too. So uh, if it had to get hit, I think this was probably ideal, <laughs> but it's gonna hurt. I think this is uh, easily even Warrior's best card, and those little increments matter a lot more than you'd think. Then we have Sanitize, which is going up a mana. This is brutal, obviously. <laughs> we just got Ignis and, and Even Warrior. Also, having the extra good board clear to go alongside Shield Shatter was huge. So, Even Warrior just loses this card now. And it makes me wonder if maybe Even Warrior isn't going to be the best way to play this deck anymore. Because the big reason to play it as Even was just because all of its best cards were Even. There was no real reason to play any odd cards, you know, like the cheap hero power was 
worth just putting Rokara in the ETC. But now we're looking at Barov, Shield Slam, Rokara, Sanitize, and also, is it called Bellowing Flames, the other three mono one? You know, we have a lot of good cards that are odd now that we can run outside of even that even can't. So it might be that the best build will shift away from even moving forward, but we'll have to see. All right, so then we have a, <laughs> this one's pretty interesting. So Gadget Sand Auctioneer is getting nerfed to seven mana and it's being cut from core. So the seven mana nerf is actually for wild but this is not going to be in standard anymore whatsoever it's a little weird to me because like if it needs to be changed for both formats why not just change it and this is a little weird to me because in addition spoilers but in addition to the gadget san wild nerf we're also getting a tony king of piracy ban in wild and uh you know without tony we're getting a plus three mana nerf to play king togwaggle to achieve the same thing and king togwaggle already costs more than auctioneer so cold tooth mine can't even tutor the auctioneer over togwaggle anymore so i i'm actually super not sure why gadget sand auctioneer is getting nerfed and removed from core while also having a tony ban i mean like i'll take it you know i hated tony druid <laughs> but uh yeah so that's interesting Gadget Sand Auctioneer is actually just getting cut from core mid-year, which I believe is the first time they've used that as a balance option. Even going back to the Hall of Fame, they weren't Hall of Faming cards mid-year either. I think this is actually a really cool balancing tool, and I hope they keep considering it moving forward. All right, next up we have some changes targeted at Twist. There are the Warlock ones in here that are all very relevant in Wild, but the rest of this is cards that only see play in Twist. So the Warlock ones, so Discard Warlock is super obnoxious in both Wild and in Twist. Chamber of Vis... I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the new Warlock location is probably the most busted card I've ever seen. Uh, you know, not including any that it might be more busted. But still, it's like an incredibly modern card compared to the other cards that got added in Caverns of Time. Kind of crazy that a two mana three charge version of this uh, <laughs> got released. But anyways, uh, this is flipped. So we have, uh, it is three mana now with only two charges. And that is probably enough to tame the deck a bit but it still seems like a pretty decent card so i don't think discard warlock is going to be unplayable you know like with the um with both of the last couple rounds of discard warlock nerfing we saw the deck kind of fall off almost completely for a while and i think that this just makes it worse dark bargain at four i think is still very good it would have had to get nerfed to five to be cut from that deck. Tiny Knight of Evil is still retaining a bit of a buff. This was a playable card before it was buffed at all, <laughs> but it is keeping half its buff. So it's still going to increase its attack twice as fast, but the health is back to normal. So it's going to be a lot easier to kill this thing. So for example, Solarium is going to make this five health instead of eight health. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a lot easier to kill now that the health buff has been reverted. And that was the major issue, right? Like is getting it out early. If you can't kill it immediately, it scales completely out of control and runs away with the game. I think Twist is really going to benefit from this. I don't think this is the type of deck that's fun to play against at all. Back then, I think it had like its tools are all extremely obnoxious and having it be a regular opponent was a big sad for the last month of Twist. So th these are all really good changes. And even in Wild, you know, like the Chamber was so good that it was getting played in non-discard decks just because two mana draw six was ridiculous. And uh, you know, talking it through, it's now three mana draw four, which is so much more tame. So yeah, this is probably fine now, and I imagine we're not going to see it much outside of Discard Warlock. It could be that the questline version that runs Hand of Gul'dan and the location still values this, but it's not going to feel nearly as hopeless for slower decks. Then we have some warrior changes. Blast from the Past is going from three mana to four mana. I think this is a little sad just because I was surprised and amused and pleased <laughs> that this card was so pivotal. You know, like it's such a cool throwback card. Everything about it is so sweet. And it's like not super great in Wild at three, right? Like, you know, we have better things to do. So having it nerfed for Twist, you know, as the, as the fancy Wild set, you know, nerfed for Twist when it's not even good in Wild is a little sad and i would hope that a lot of these when the twist format finally 
moves away from wonders get reverted for wilds. But these are pretty tame nerfs for Warrior, right? I was a little worried the way some people were talking that Warrior was going to get gutted. And I really like Warrior. <laughs> you know, like the only reason that I haven't been playing Twist Warrior every day on stream and posting a Twist Warrior video every day on YouTube is because I didn't think that my audience would keep watching. Like, but like, I really enjoy that play style so if it got actually nerfed as hard as some people wanted i think it would have been a huge shame but yeah so one mana up on blast from the past and one health lost on ivory or rook i actually don't know how impactful this is going to be because obviously the big thing about it is how much armor it gets you but it is a lot easier to clear right because two mana deal three damage is like the average way that removal goes. So you can clear it with a bash, you can clear it with fiery war axe, you can clear it with dark bomb, frostbolt, wrath. All of these things are more in range now. So it might be a lot harder to lose tempo and pressure when your opponent plays this now. But overall pretty light for warrior, so I imagine the deck will still be strong moving into next month's extra large twist for those of you who don't know next month it's going to be the same format in twist but with the added caveat of your deck and health you can put uh, up to 40 cards in your deck and your health will match you can run a 30 card deck with 30 health you can run a 33 card deck with 33 health and you can run a 40 card deck with 40 health you know like that type of thing good decks will will either be 30 or 40 <laughs> uh, i think warriors should still be all right next up we have some jade nerfs so Blade of Cthulhu is going from 6 mana to 7. Another unfortunate change, I think, really with both this and Jade Telegram. An unfortunate change from a wild perspective, because these cards are like cool off-meta wild things you can do, and they aren't especially effective. So making them that much harder to play with, I think, is a shame. But in the context of Twist, it's really good, right? Like Blade of Cthulhu being 6 mana was brutal. Jade Telegram being played for 1 or 3 was brutal. <laughs> so taming these cards, I think, is pretty good. Scarab Gong as well. This is the token produced by Scarab Lord. Is going from two health to one, so you only get one board of scarabs instead of two boards of scarabs, which I think is a great change. What was really obnoxious about this is like you go to clear the scarab board with something like Whirlwind or Hellfire, and it would clear the board while also ticking the gong and. The because of the way that it's worded, <laughs> you clear their board to create a board for them. So it's just like a really obnoxious play experience, I think, just because it triggered twice. And I think this is a, a big step in the right direction. And finally, for Twist, we have Trial of Germungers, which is uh, a change that might surprise you because I don't think it really caught on that hard in popularity. But this is the one that summons Asimha and Dreadscale from your deck. So one of them makes it so that any damage to an enemy will kill it. And the other one deals one damage to all enemies at the end of the turn. So it was five mana, one-sided board clear, develop two three twos that will do it again if left alone. So it was basically five mana win the game <laughs> in the context of Twist. And uh, with the added benefit of being an awful play experience for the Hunter player, which is I think why it didn't catch on that far. Because some of these games were being decided by drawing one of the worms on turn four, you know, so that your, your broken spell didn't actually function. Uh, but yeah, this deck was really, really good into everything other than Warrior. So toning down Jermungers I think is good i think the play style is inherently keeping the deck from being that popular we'll see if the one mana nerf is enough to discourage this type of play overall i think the card is a little you know like it's cute flavor wise but i think it's a little scuffed mechanically i don't <laughs> uh i think the worse this card is the better honestly and finally we have some wild nerfs so these are pretty interesting this is the most wild nerfs i think we've ever gotten in one go a few of these are overdue and a few of these I think the targets are good, but the actual changes are a little awkward. So Spirit of the Frog going up to mana, I think is really good. It's uh, It was like a three mana auctioneer for Frog Shaman, and we were getting really early kills, especially with Flash of Lightning coming out. Is the deck still playable with a five mana frog? I think it's going to be a lot worse, but it might actually still be playable if you think about it considering auctioneer this is an unnerfed auctioneer for that deck <laughs> but anyways i think a, a two mana nerf is is really good for this because i think one mana wouldn't have changed really anything but i'm pleased to see frog shaman at least a couple turns slower firemancer flurgle is going from two mana to four mana and scargill is going from four mana to five mana which i think is really good because if you changed just flurgle then the big murloc wombo turn is completely unaffected right 
And that's the worst part of that strategy is just having your board obliterated while your opponent makes a ton of stats and removes something out of your hand with Mutanus. I don't know that this hit to Scargill was quite hard enough. Yes, this potentially slows it down a turn, but if you think about it from Clownfish on three into Scargill plus stuff on four, you can still do Scargill Mutanus play. You can still do Clownfish plus Gorlock plus Mutanus or something like that. It is a little bit more limiting because it is one less Murloc you can play. But as the game goes on, you know, you're probably not going to notice this nerf whatsoever. So anyways, I do think, uh, I don't want to sell it short because like it is definitely going to have an impact, right? This is two more mana on Flurgle. You can't go Flurgle Toxfin on three anymore. And that, that play is really important even to the full on Murloc package. And Scargill is possibly getting delayed by a turn in a lot of situations. But because the Scargill nerf was kind of soft and Flurgle and Toxfin on five is still broken, <laughs> I'm not sure it affects the list at all. Like the list is going to be slower, less consistent with its Murlocs, but I think the whole package is probably still worth playing. I think if Scargill had gone to six, we might have seen an adjustment to maybe run like a single ice fishing to draw just the combo, uh, the Flurgal Toxman combo to play on five. But since it only went up one, I think that the Murloc package might still be one of Shutterwalk Shaman's strongest tools. It remains to be seen. I mean, like it's it's double the mana on Flurgal, and that's nothing to scoff at. It could just be brutal enough not to be worth it but we're going into a meta that's going to be defined by like Questline Druid, Miracle Rogue, Questline Demon Hunter type of stuff that puts a bunch of stats out on early. And uh, this is a one-sided board clear on five that also can be played despite Lotheb. So I, I think that's significant, but there is a chance that it's just too bad to run now. Then we have Shadow Essence, which is getting nerfed for Big Priest. What I would have liked for this is to change it so that Shadow Essence only works if your deck only contains Shadow Spells, because that would have separated it from Illuminate and Love Everlasting without really changing the deck functionally. The core of the deck is all Shadow, and the Holy Spells that it was running have Shadow counterparts. So it's not like the deck actually changes that much outside of losing its high rolls. And I think the high rolls are the only problem with the deck at this point. You know, in today's wild, I think getting Neptulon out on two, three, and four was the big issue with it. And if we weren't gonna change Shadow Essence like that, I don't think Shadow Essence was the best target. I think we should have banned Illuminate because then while Love Everlasting still lets you do it on four, that's one card instead of three that we're letting you do it at four before. So this doesn't separate it from those high rolls. It does increase the turn count that those high rolls are possible. So now Illuminate's earliest high roll is turn three. So it's happening on turn three or turn four instead of on two or turn three. And I don't know that a turn three, four high roll is significantly less frustrating than a turn two, three high roll. So I think that this change is mostly just annoying to big priest players without really alleviating the frustrations of people who don't like to face that deck. So I don't really understand it. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like scoff too hard at wild attention because like I'll take whatever at this point. We, we get updates so rarely. I just feel like this nerf doesn't really serve Anybody. Then we have Cabal Lackey. I have similar opinions, but not quite as strong on this as I do with Shadow Essence. So Secret Mage is not really strong at the moment. What it is, is incredibly obnoxious. It's just like you, you hate to play against it. I have never thought that the power of Secret Mage is Secret Mage's issue. There are a lot of decks like Secret Mage that draw a lot, that have a lot of burst damage, that have a lot of good tempo. The big difference between them is how you interact with those strengths, you know, like you can heal out of range of other burst decks. You can respond to the stuff that's played because your opponent drew a lot with other decks. But not only does Secret Mage protect the value and tempo it gains from all of that with its secrets, but you have to play a guessing game to interact with it. It's not like when your opponent plays Lothab to protect a couple giants. You know, you know what you have to do. You have to play like minions or something to deal with those. With Seeker Mage, you know, who knows? <laughs> they might have counterspell, they might have objection. You know, it's just, that's why Seeker Mage is annoying. So Seeker Mage, I don't think is a power issue right now. It's like, you know, it's not as weak as it was around Stormwind that year, but it's, it's not especially strong right now. The reason to nerf it is because it feels bad to play against. And I don't think that Cabal Lackey was the feels bad solution. You really have to look at objection and counterspell if you want to solve that problem. So I definitely would have targeted secrets if I was going to do a feels nerf for secret mage. The reason that I don't think that this is quite as weird of a nerf as the shadow essence nerf is, is because Cabal Lackey is like the best card in that deck. <laughs> and when decks 
lose their best card, this is a gutting of Cabal Lackey. When, when decks lose their best card, they frequently fall off significantly. Cabal Lackey is now a two mana card, and Seeker Mage has a ton of two mana cards. And this is like not competition for them. <laughs> so you're just going to cut this out of Seeker Mage entirely. And uh, losing your best card, I think people are going to play a lot less Seeker Mage. So at least the people who hated playing against Seeker Mage, I think are gonna benefit from this nerf just because the deck is kind of trash now. <laughs> Next up, we have a couple of bans. So we have Mech Warper and Tony King of Piracy are getting banned from Wild. If this Mech Warper ban had happened a year ago, I would have criticized it pretty strongly. It doesn't make a lot of sense to ban a Wild only card from Wild. But the thing is, it's not a wild only card anymore. Now we have three constructed formats. We have standard and wild and twist to think about, which uh, now that I mention it is another funny thing about Cabal Lackey. If you remember, they buffed Cabal Crystal Runner for twist. And now they've like gutted Cabal Lackey, even though it's in twist. So like <laughs> Secret Mage and twist is just not happening. Uh, anyways, so uh, Mech Warper is integral to Mech Mage and Mech Paladin for some of their early high rolls. So it's good that it's removed from wild in its current form. But I guess they want to have Mech Dex be a thing in either this twist format or in future twist formats. So they're removing it from wild just to keep it available in twist, which frankly, I think is a pretty good decision. I, I would have probably nerf this to four if I was going to change it and that effectively deletes it there's a chance that it might still get played at four in wild just because there's like a bunch of cost reduction that stacks with itself so you can get this back down costing low to play your whole hand but four is pretty significant so it might have been functionally banning it anyway but this way they can still use it in twist if they want to do that so Pretty cool. And then we have a Tony King of Piracy ban, which is interesting because they're nerfing Auctioneer. So like without Tony, do we need Auctioneer nerfed? <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I super understand it, but they could be seeing something that I'm not. If I was going to nerf Tony Druid, I would have changed Naturalize to two mana and draw one card. And then I don't think you need to touch Auctioneer or Tony with respect to that deck, but maybe they see, like they know what's coming out and I don't. So it could be that they think that that's too short term and they see Auctioneer being more of a problem moving forward. They see Tony being more of a problem moving forward. As someone who rolled their eyes into the back of the head when <laughs> Tony was uh, shown, I'm not sad to see it go, but as somebody who has the signature Tony King of Piracy, I'm a little sad to not be able to play it in wild anymore. <laughs> but as someone who hates Tony Druid, I'm pretty excited to see that deck gutted. So maybe a third of my matches won't be up against that deck anymore. <laughs> then we have a bunch of buffs and these are all super cool. I'm so excited for the buffs. I actually wish they'd gone way harder with buffs for Twist. I feel like Warrior and Rogue, I think were both very, very fun decks and I'd rather the other classes catch up with them then have them made less fun with nerfs, if you know what I mean. But the buffs that are happening are pretty cool. I'm excited to play with most of these. Tyrion is going to be an 8-8. It was a 6-6 before. I think this will make it feel a lot better in Twist. I don't know that it's like wild playable and maybe it's standard playable, but it also makes me want signature Tyrion. So hopefully I pull that. Tears Tears is a very subtle change. It's going from resurrecting paladin minions to resurrecting class minions. And this is mostly a buff to discovering it in other classes because it was awful before to discover it. It was like a blank card. So subtle change that doesn't really affect it for Paladin, but it does make it a lot less annoying to discover. Bronze Dragon Knight is gaining taunt. That's pretty good. It's going to be a lot more interesting to hand buff. When you get this down, it'll actually defend you instead of just being a giant stat pile. Obviously, we're mostly going to see this in, in Twist. Dragonfire Potion is going down a mana, which is huge for Twist. I don't know that Reno Priest wants this. It's like a mana more than Soul Rend, and Soul Rend is really good at four. But yeah, maybe five mana Dragonfire Potion is good enough in, uh, in Wild. Uh, I'll certainly play with it. Elemental Destruction is going from Overload 5 to Overload 2, which which is a huge reduction. I would have liked to see it change to not deal random damage and to just do five, but in twist comboing this with Halazeal will be a lot less devastating because you don't actually lose your whole turn next turn after you play it. And maybe in wild overload two is pretty good for this uh, and will help shore up some of the ground of possibly losing Flurgal Toxman. Scenarian Hold is going from two mana to one mana. I don't know that the mana was what was holding Scenarian Hold back. I feel like Druid just couldn't compete with the value that was coming from Discard Warlock and Jade Rogue. So I feel like maybe 
buffing reactive tools or draw cards was the way to go. But it can't hurt. I mean, it's, uh, it's an interesting card, and it was uh, a bit of a shame that it didn't quite get a chance to get played in Twist. Um, maybe with extra large uh, next month, it'll be a little better. Then we have Alakir Winds of Time is going from five armor to eight armor. I think that this is going to change nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the problem with Alakir Winds of Time is that it has nothing good to draw. In both Twist and in Wild, the Charge, Divine Shield, Taunt, and Wind Fury minions all suck. <laughs> compared to uh, the power needed to compete in those formats. So to get to the busted hero power, you have to play seven mana do nothing. And maybe the extra three armor helps you play seven mana do nothing a little bit easier, but you're still missing out on a whole battle cry to play this card. So instead of buffing the armor on it, I would have much rather seen buffs to Divine Shield, Charge, Taunt, and Wind Fury minions that Shaman would like to play so that it could draw things that it wants to draw and not miss out on that whole battle cry and next up we have such a cool change we have rune adjustments to the plague package and frost queen syndragosa i think that making multi rune cards was not the way to get multi rune decks to show up the big way to do that is to reduce the power of triple rune cards and add power to double and single rune cards that is how you get people to actually mix and match the dk runes more and trying to do the multi runes with them just kind of barred any card that had multi runes on it from seeing any play, which was really sad because the DK Colossal is so cool. Tomb Trader and Down with the Ship going to just unholy means that an unholy even DK with plagues is actually a little bit more interesting in wild. You're gaining two cards that you couldn't have before, and then you can put a copy of the weapon and the rush reborn payoff in your ETC to use situationally. I'm pretty excited about that, especially moving into a format that might contain a lot of quest mage. I'm going to talk about ice block in a second, but <laughs> even in standard, I'm just really excited to play with this card. Frost Queen Syndragosa, I was really sad to see it at a multi-room because I instantly knew it would be unplayable. <laughs> I know that it's Frost Queen Syndragosa. I think that's a huge flavor win to have it just be Frost. It doesn't really make sense for it to be blood flavor-wise. And like, you can't really, you know, make it a blood card given that it's a Frost Worm named Frost Queen Syndragosa that freezes. You know, you can't really give that to blood. <laughs> but uh, blood is the deck that I wanted to play it in. So it's a little sad to lose that card from the Hematurge pool I would have really liked to see this go to blood just from a mechanics level. I know that that's not an option. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But I'm still pleased that this is becoming a playable card instead of an unplayable one. And finally, we have a buff that I and probably you have been wanting for 10 years. Lord Jaraxxus is going to 8 mana so that we can play him and hero power in the same turn. Oh. <laughs> also, you can run this in even warlock now, which is interesting. I don't know that you want to, but uh, you might. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really pleased. I think this is so cool. I'm really excited to play some more Lord Jaraxxus. So that wraps up all of the changes. I'm really excited for the nerfs. I'm really excited for the buffs. I kind of wish that there were a lot more buffs, but I'm really happy with the ones that we got. The big miss, I think, for the wild nerfs was Ice Block. I'm sad we couldn't get a change for that. I do admit it's a really hard card to change. The best mechanical change for the card is to make it only ever trigger once. So like the first time it goes off, that is the only time an ice block can ever trigger again. But the problem is you can run two copies of it. So it becomes awkward to have a card available at two copies where only one is usable. Another thing you could do is remove it from discover pools, but the problem isn't randomly generating it, it's getting it back a bunch of times with rewind, volume up, and Savara. Making it so that you can't discover a card you've played, I don't think has been done before, um, and I do understand why that would be clunky and weird. You'd think it was a bug, right? If you'd played a card for Savara, played Savara, and then you only get two cards back. Without changing what it actually does, I think it's really hard to make an adjustment to Ice Block. And I do think that one Ice Block is cool. Like I like it when Reno Mage has Ice Block. Playing around a single Ice Block is also fine with me. I didn't mind it when Secret Mage used to play a singleton copy of it. It's only Ice Block chains that I think are frustrating. When you're going up against like four or seven Ice Blocks, that's when it's like super annoying. <laughs> it's all the frustration of the game being over on three with the added frustration of 
the game being a huge grind. And I really think that ideally we would have gotten a nice block change here, but it's a tough issue to tackle. It could be that it needs to be mech warpered if we're going to change it at all. So just removing it from wild and then other formats like twist could still play it. I don't know if it's banned in duels or anything. <laughs> Overall, super pleased with the patch, super pleased with the wild attention. I actually thought we weren't getting any more ever again. So <laughs> uh, getting some, even if it's not perfect, I think is fantastic. And I'm really pleased to not be going up against Tony Druid anymore because I that deck specifically was very much ruining my good time and wild is going to be a lot more fun without it similarly twist is going to be a lot more fun without discard warlock i think discard warlock is not a fun deck to play against at all and not a particularly fun deck to play in twist so like it's just a net negative for everybody <laughs> uh for being as good as it was so uh love these changes love the buffs really looking forward to playing tomorrow let me know in the comments what you thought of the patch what you're looking forward to playing what you would have liked to see buffed or nerfed uh, remember to like and subscribe to support the channel, and thank you so much for watching. Bottom, bottom, bum, bum. Bottom, bottom, bum, bum. Bottom, 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 bottom,